Good evening, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, any of our guests and visitors tonight, please fill out one of our welcoming cards. That it's on that little cart out there in the in the welcome center. Um, I have a couple of announcements for us tonight. First one is we are back to sort of our normal hours for for Sunday and Saturday, six o'clock and eight thirty and eleven o'clock, except for tomorrow. Tomorrow's eleven o'clock. So after that, back to kind of normal. Um, also, on Wednesday nights, we are picking back up on our Lutheran, the Christian, uh, I think, basic Lutheran Christianity at 6.30 uh, on Wednesday nights. And we do that as for, it just keeps going, for new members and for people that want to ha have answers, quest questions answered about Christianity. They want to come and discuss some things about, about Christ or about, about uh, Lutheranism. That's a good time to do that. And also, uh, go through the series and and use that to become members at our church. Also, if you purchased or bought poinsettias for the altar, you can certainly go out and take those home with you tonight. Be, be, uh, they're yours, okay? Also, one other thing I want to talk about. We got these little cards like this, okay? And they're out on the uh, little information card out there. And they're not just for us, per se. I stuff a bunch of them in my wallet, okay? And they've got you know, our address on there and information about the church on there, our, web, our website on the back. And if you're talking to somebody about the Lord and you want to invite them to church, perfect, okay? Just hand them one of those and say, you're invited, okay? So uh, you can grab a couple of those if you want. There should be a stack of them out there. We've been using them for most of 2022. And we have plenty of them. With that, we're going to start our service today. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
O oh God, our maker and redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the first Sunday after Christmas is from the book of Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us, and the great goodness to the house of Israel that he has granted them according to his compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who not will who will not deal falsely, and he became their savior. In all their affection, he was um, affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his, ho his Holy Spirit. Therefore he turned to be their enemy, and himself fought against them. He remembered the days of old, of Moses and his people. Where, where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who, who put in the midst of them his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them to make, him, to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths like a horse in the desert, they did not stumble. Like livestock that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So you led your people to make for yourself a glorious name. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The epistle reading is from the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now when the wise men had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod, then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region, who were two years old and under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, 
Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth. And what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called. A Nazarene. This is the gospel of the Lord. I'm going to preach on the epistle lesson of Galatians 4. I'm going to reread it very quickly here. It's a short, short uh, verse. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, then an heir through God. So where is Galatia, or where was Galatia? It was in the middle or interior of Asia Minor, present-day Turkey. And there were four major cities that the Apostle Paul visited on his second missionary journey. They were Derbe, Lystra, Iconium, and Presidian Antioch. 
the epistle to the Galatians is a letter to the churches in those cities. Evidently, there was a problem concerning the gospel in the churches of Galatia. Jewish Christians were requiring that everyone be physically circumcised. And circumcision was a mark of God's covenant with Abraham. The birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus fulfilled that covenant. With the covenant fulfilled, circumcision was no longer needed or required. Jesus came not to provide a new law, but to provide a new way through faith. Here's what Paul also wrote to the Colossians. In him also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. So baptism is a circumcision of the heart. If you are a believer, you are free according to sin. If you are a not a believer, it goes sort of like this. You can go and do whatever you want to do. You can pursue any sinful desires that you want. You just need to know that this way of life is under the law, and the law condemns the desires of the flesh. But this ends in eternal death and destruction. With faith, however, in Christ, the promises of the gospel, you are living and walking in the Spirit. Faith leads to righteousness and eternal life in Christ Jesus. You are not under the law. When a person hears the word of God, the Holy Spirit uses it to work faith in that person. Jesus explained this in his parable of the sower. Here it is. And he told them many things in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell on among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Now Jesus explained this parable to his disciples. Hear then the parable of the sower. When someone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation and persecution arise, on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears good fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. My friends, notice that all those in the parable had the word of the kingdom sown in their heart but to different results. St. Paul also wrote this to the Romans, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. The Galatians, they had the gospel, but they were having trouble changing their ways from under the law to the freedom of the gospel. You and I have this problem sometimes ourselves. We're brought up and trained at home, at school, and at our jobs to work for perfection. It's not a bad thing in itself. It's very important, isn't it, to identify the right things to do in our daily lives and our work lives and to do them correctly. Consider an airplane pilot. 
before takeoff is a long list of things to check so that the flight goes without incident. Consider a quality control engineer. They're trained to look for and correct things that are wrong in manufacturing. And they become so good at spotting wrong that sometimes they fail to see the good. So we all strive to make things flawless, items that we can use. In general, though, in school, we're also taught this. And that is to spot what is incorrect in an assignment and to fix it before we hand our homework in. And we go through the grades and progressively get better at spotting errors. Great, right? Maybe someday we will achieve perfection in our material world. But I doubt that, don't you? But we do make good material things that are useful and last a long time. The problem comes, though, when we apply our ability to spot error to people. When we quit understanding that they are God's creation made in his image. All people are God's creations, whether they are believers or not. And certainly, we're not going to bring an unbelieving person to the side of their Savior, Jesus Christ, by criticizing them. This becomes even more serious, though, when we can't stop ourselves from finding error or wrong or sin in our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are all sinners. It is easy work to identify error, wrong, or sin in another. Rubbing one's face in their wrongs only makes a person resentful and defensive. Laying the law on them is easy work. As Christians, we are not under the law, though, are we? We show the sin of a fellow Christian to them in a humble, kind, and private way. We do this in the spirit to help them, not, not to hurt them. The law was given to the children of Israel to reveal God's will and to keep them from doing things against his will. They broke God's law. So here's a question. Were the children of Israel made righteous through the law as given to them by God through Moses? No. If the law could have saved them, then there would have been no reason for him to send his son. Many years before Moses, and the giving of the law. Abraham was seen as righteous by God because of faith in the promises of God. So the promise that God gave to Abraham takes precedent before the law. It came first. We are saved by grace through faith. Jesus is the offspring that was promised to Abraham. And before the saving act of Christ on the cross, all were under the law and were held as slaves to sin because of the law. The law was a type of guardian or captor until Christ. So if we turn to the first part of our text. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, which was everybody. God came and lived, a, Jesus came and he lived a sinless life under the law and died for our sins on the cross. This marked the fullness of time. This act freed us from being under the law. It freed the children of Israel and all people from their slavery to sin and the guardianship of the law and released them from their sin if they believed in Christ. God laid the, the past, present, and future sins of the whole world on Jesus on the cross. Jesus was falsely accused of sin by the law and killed Friends of Christ, you and I have been saved by this act of grace. If we believe and trust in Jesus, we are no longer under the law. We are seen as righteous in God's sight, just as Abraham was seen by God. We are seen this way for the sake of his son, Jesus. We are saved by faith, worked in our hearts by the Spirit, sent to us by the Father. Because we are no longer under the law, we are adopted sons and daughters of the Father, and heirs to eternal life. Those who don't believe or trust in Jesus Christ are still under the law. However, the guardianship of the law because of sin is no longer in effect 
those under the law will die. And this is true since the fullness of time has come. Jesus has come. The old covenant is fulfilled. And a new covenant is here based on faith. So I have a story that I want to tell that I think explains uh, where we are after the fullness of time as Christians. And I think it fits with our, our message for today. Picture a scene in a courtroom. The judge is in a black robe. He's entered the courtroom and takes his seat. A prisoner, handcuffed, is led into the room. He sees the judge. His heart starts beating heavily, and he's filled with fear. He has good reason to fear, since the judge is going to pronounce sentence on all his, his crimes. Then suddenly, a young boy appears in the room, makes his way through the seats filled with spectators. He runs up to the judge and whispers something in his ear. The judge reaches into his pocket and gives the boy a coin. And the boy exits in a happy mood. The boy had no fear of the man robed in black. The judge was his father. It's like that for us. In Christ, God is not our judge. In Christ, God is to us what the judge was to the little boy, our father. When we can approach him fearlessly, he will provide for us. We can call on our Father in heaven, like the way Paul said in our text today, Abba, Father. If we translate Abba as dear Father, then we have dear Father, Father. This is a call of a son or a daughter to the Father they love. God is our Father. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. At this time, please rise as we join together and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and visible. In your word, You may be seated for the prayers of the church. Today, in addition to our prayer page, we pray for Tony Lang, also Paul Panucci. Let us pray for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The heavens are the work of your fingers, yet you willed to save us in the most humble and sacrificial of ways. Already eight days after being born of the Virgin Mary, your son was at work for our salvation by fulfilling your law and shedding his blood. Receive our heartfelt thanks for the righteousness and forgiveness of sins we have obtained through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy.
but that God, you sent your son into our flesh, and as an infant he first shed the blood that would cleanse us from our sins. Accept our thanks for the loving kindness shown to us sinners. Grant us steadfast faith that we should not forget all of your benefits or lose sight of your promise. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you declare that in Jesus Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for we all are one in him. Preserve us from all ungodly prejudice, yet instill in us a deep appreciation of our distinctive calling. Grant that we are not we do not resent what you have called us to do or to be, but rejoice to serve you as you have ordained us. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, you have shown your power by establishing governments and leaders to serve your people in your name. Grant to our president, governor, congress, legislators, judges, and magistrates the wisdom and courage to act with integrity on behalf of all people, especially those least able to defend themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, keep us by your grace. Remember those in need who cry out to you, especially Steve, Joan, Jennifer, Jack, Heather, Lisa, Paul, Davitha, Carl, Meka, Joy, Red, Barbara, Jim, Dennis, Gary, Baby Thomas, John, Bert, Kathy, Brody, Diana, Liberty, Kevin, Clarence, Chris, Susan, Ed, Keith, Pat, Rose, Ebony, David, Anita, Barbara, Robert, Abby, Paul, and Tony. The Lord bring peace and comfort to the families of Melissa Brown, Yanni Smith, Carl Damian, and Woody Whiten. According to your will and wisdom, lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace, Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you invite your children to the table of your Son. May your Holy Spirit help us to discern Christ's body and blood in this sacrament and to come with joyful and repentant hearts to receive the foretaste of the eternal feast. Strengthen us by this blessed, blessed communion that we would love you above all and love one another in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, in your steadfast love you have put off the day of Jesus' return until the perfect time when the number of your elect is complete and all have heard the word of your kingdom. Keep your people watchful, vigilant, and awake until your gift of faith until that day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, just a reminder that as you come up for Holy Communion, you can bring your tithes and offerings to the collection place up here on the front. And there is another way to give at Grace, and that is at grace-lutheran.com. With that, please rise. up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We share God's peace with those around us.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.